All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory. Once the Yahweh Bashim al or Chakladash, which Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father's true name. Yahweh Shad is whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's his true name. And Chakladash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to all you brothers out there. And uh, we're just going to do a quick um, open forum video right now, a little live stream. We're going to get into uh, what's happening out there in Buffalo, New York. Us remembering ourselves as Israelites and salvation. All right. And, um, you know, we see, you know, judgment going on right now. All right. And in particular out there in New York, in, you know, Buffalo, you know, upstate New York and all that. Um, you know, uh, many people have died. A lot of people are, um, you know, trapped inside their homes. They can't move around, can't work, because there's, you know, X amount of snow out there. Also, you, you know, you had that, that cold blast, all right, that Arctic blast that came through. So, then, you know, another thing, too, is uh, out there in New York or out there in Buffalo, with all these things happening, you're having people looting left and right. You know, I'm sure you've all seen, you know, video clips on that. And, you know, the cops can't do anything. Yeah, I saw a video where you had a police officer. He was driving by, you know, one of these, you know, grocery stores. And he was trying to stop the people from looting. And they just kept walking. You know, he had the sirens on and all that. They just kept walking, you know, to their homes. And the reason why is because the cops couldn't even turn down the streets, all right, the side streets, because it was all blocked with snow. Okay, and that's an example of what's to come. That's that second Ezra, all right, you know, uh, coming to play. That second Ezra 15, which, you know what, we'll just start off with that and see where the Spirit takes us. Okay, but let's get second Ezra 15. This is what it says here. In second Ezra chapter 15, and we'll start at verse 14. Actually, no, yeah, let's get, uh, let's, let's start there. This is 2nd Ezra 15 and 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. Okay? And it didn't get to this level as of yet, but this will come to pass. Okay? And that's one of the uh, actual prophecies where there's going to be race uh, uh, wars, race riots. Okay? That's in 2nd Ezra all right, second, that was uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, where it says, Nation shall rise against nation. When you look up that word nation, it goes into your actual, uh, um, you know, ethnic group, okay? Who you are as a people. So that's that's coming. All right, there, there's going to be, you know, gangs of people fighting one another. All right, for what? Natural resources. That, that's what it's all going to come down to. Do you have natural resources or not? And they show you, you know, these things in, in particular movies. Watch uh, um, the Book of Eli, which I actually recently watched. I believe it's actually on, um, is it Netflix? It might be on Netflix or Tubi TV. I forgot. It was one of the, um, one of those streaming sites, and they, 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 that was one of the movies that they had on there, and I ended up watching it. And you saw that, you know, ban you know, uh, people banding together to gather these natural resources. Okay. Um, I don't know if they still have it on Netflix. Um, I, um, it, it was called The Domestics. It came out, I think, in 2016 or 17. You know, Lord's Will, you know, it's still on uh, Netflix. It was one of their original um, movies that they made. But the point being, though, is in that movie, they showed you how cities are going to be divided into particular uh, uh, territories and how people are going to work together in order to survive and how people clash, okay? To get those natural resources. Also, the, the uh, uh, it's on Netflix, it, but this is a series, Black Summer. There's two seasons, in particular season two. Watch that. That whole uh, season two is about how um, people are literally fighting over a care package. Alright? Go watch that movie, or a series. And that, that gives you a, um, uh, 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 an idea of what's to come. Okay? But let's keep reading. This is a second Ezra 15 and 16 now. For there shall should be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard the kings nor princes, 
and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And that's what you're seeing right now in Buffalo, New York. Now, they're not necessarily rising up against, you know, the the, uh, the, the officials, you know, the mayor, all right, you know, the aldermen, etc., right? But they're not listening to the to the authorities. That's sedition right there. They're not, they're not following order. They're doing as they please. And why is that? Because these officials, these, you know, cops, they can't do anything, you know, about the situation. Okay? They can try to enforce things. You know, play that role, so to speak, right? But they can't necessarily enforce things because it's so hectic out there, okay? Now, let's keep reading. Turn this a little bit to sunlight. No, I can't. Eh, whatever, it's going to have a glare. But uh, this is uh, verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. This is when martial law um, is declared and when people are going to be forced to stay home, okay? They're going to be forced to not leave their neighborhoods, their cities, etc. Verse 18, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. And this is what's coming, okay? The cities are going to be destroyed and troubled. All right, the houses are going to be, you know, uh, uh, left in desolation. People are going to be afraid, okay? And that's because they're not going to have any answers, all right? They're not going to have any answers. The only ones who will have the answers are the elect, are right, starting with the 144,000, the prophets, and the followers and believers, you know, um, they have the followers and believers, the rest of one third, you see? But let me keep reading, verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And that's what we're seeing right now in New York. Like I said, people are raiding the stores, and there's no consequences. Now, some people really need to grab those, um, the natural resources, you know, the bread, some meats, cheese, milk, water, etc., right? But a lot of them are just, you know, doing it just to do it. They have the goods at home, but no one's stopping them, okay? No one's stopping them. But like I said, the, the, uh, this is the spirit that, you know, uh, uh, people get... When uh, um, adversity hits, when trials and tribulations, when tribulate, uh, when um, what does it say here? Yeah, for when great tribulations hit, this is what uh, happens. This is the spirit that comes with it. Okay, that anarchy spirit. First, people do it just because they're not gonna get um caught. All right, you know, for stealing the TV, the the, the iPhones, etc., whatever it is, right? You know, the furniture. They're like, okay, whatever, it's a free for all. Let me just grab what I can get. Right, but eventually they actually start, you know, panicking when they can't, you know, feed themselves, when they can't, you know, get their meds, or their loved ones can't get these things. Right. So then they start, you know, they 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 they, they go into survival mode. All right. You see, but all these are judgments of Yahweh Bashemel uh, of Yahweh Bashemel Shai. These um, they, these are plagues. These are actual plagues. Okay, they, these are all judgments of the Lord, and the reason why is because the people are wicked. All right, and, and in particular, our people. So let's get this real quick. This is um Second Ezra fifteen and five. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction. You see. Sword, famine, death, and destruction. These are plagues from the Most High. And this is the reason why. For be, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. This is why the Lord sends these uh, plagues, these judgments to the world. It's because of the wickedness. And our people are heavily into wickedness. Alright? Our people, you know, they're wise to do evil. As the scriptures say in the, the book of Jeremiah, they, they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Our people reject the knowledge, actually. And that's why they're uh, destroyed, and that's why they're going to be uh, 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 eliminated, deleted, okay, by the Most High. You see? Let's get this. This is Second Ezra 16 and 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famines and great death. 
the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulanguish and anguish are set as scourges for amendment. And that word amendment means for your correction, your improvement. The Lord throws these plagues out there, such as what's happening out in uh, Buffalo, New York, right? You know, all that snow mixed with, you know, these, uh, uh, um, these, uh, uh, Arctic temperatures, the Lord, um, the Lord sends these, uh, you know, sends plagues like that so our people can get right. So they can say, you know what, this is from the Heavenly Father. People dying, people looting, people stealing, all right? Uh, 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 they're coming upon us because we need to get right. But our people, they don't care. They don't consider. Yeah, at that present moment, they may be a little afraid. They may get worried. They, 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 you know, they call on God and Jesus. You know, that's our people. When any time, you know, trouble hits them, that's when they start. You know, they, they, they try to get right. You see. But, but once things get, you know, better, they're gonna go straight back to wickedness. They're gonna commit adultery, idolatry. All right. They're gonna go. Uh, 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 they're gonna go use drugs, sell drugs. Steal, kill, murder. All right. You see, that that's our people. But let me keep reading, verse twenty. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be mindful, always mindful of the scourges. See, when these things hit them, they're they're not going to turn away from their wickedness. All right. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay. You know, but point being though is these things that um that are happening in Buffalo, you know, eventually it's gonna um at some point the Lord's gonna have these situations happen all over. Okay? And this is why it's so key right now for our, uh for us to get back into the you know into the good graces of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. This is why we can't take this um grace period for granted. That's why the scriptures say, let's get two real quick. Starting the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. It says what? That seek the Lord while he may be found. This is Isaiah 55 and um, and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. You see, we're supposed to be um, turning, turning away from our wickedness. We're supposed to seek the Lord. All right, we're we're supposed to try to uh, try to get right to the best of our ability. Okay. And this is a part of us uh, remembering ourselves. You see? Then that's prophecy. Let's get that in uh, the book of, uh, what is that, uh, uh, Baruch? We're going to remember ourselves in the land of our captivities. Because look, the Lord, he wants a remnant to wake up. Okay? He wants a remnant to wake up before the great destruction. So they can get saved, so they can get that mercy. Because you have to remember, the nation of Israel is not going to be wiped out. The Lord is not going to allow that. He made a covenant with whom? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And with that being said, which those are our forefathers. And with that being said, right, he cannot eliminate our nation. So he's going to allow the elect to remember themselves and to get right. Before the, these uh, great and evil days that are fast approaching. You know, the time of Jacob's trouble. So let's get this. This is Baruch chapter, um, what is this, 2? Baruch chapter 2 and, let's start at 27. It's Baruch 2 and 27. And the Lord, Yahweh, our power, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness and according to all thy great, um, and all the great mercy of thine. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write thy law before the children of Israel, saying, 
if ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. And the Lord did that. And that's because of our disobedience. Okay? We became ins insignificant. And even uh, um, during a, a particular time period, we were reduced greatly in numbers. Remember, hey, Esau was killing us left and right. Um, I believe um, there was only about 500 uh, Ephraimites, which are the so-called Puerto Ricans, left after uh, Christopher Columbus so-called found that land. And they were just straight slaughtering those that were on the island. You know? Gad was getting, you know, taken down left and right when they were conquering uh, the Americas. Or, or, or so like out here in America. You know, the states. You know? So you see? But let's keep reading. This is uh, Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they will not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of the, their captivities... They shall remember themselves. Okay? You see? We were to remember ourselves in the land of our captivities. And that's what's uh, happening right now. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing the great awakening of the nation of Israel. You see uh, the two kingdoms, the, the southern and the northern kingdom, waking up. All right? You know, uh, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. You're also seeing the... Uh, uh, Israelite foreigners, those Israelites who look like the uh, the other nations, but their the sea their sea line goes back to whom Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? They're co they're coming back to their true identity. All right, you know you see camps popping up everywhere, all over the United States. They, it's pretty much in every major city in the U.S. right now. You have a camp. All right. You have, um, you know, camps popping up, popping up in all parts of uh, South America, the islands, you know, uh, uh, different parts of Africa, different parts of Europe, etc. Our people are waking up, you see? And that's because the Lord said it was going to happen. Biblical prophecy. And like I said, the reason why the Lord's doing that is so... The remnant can be saved. So we can be saved, Lord willing, we're a part of that. Alright? Because uh, he, he, he's got to fulfill his promises. He cannot let us uh, let us die off in the nation. You see? Let's keep reading. Um, and I'm going to read 30 again. This is Baruch 2 and 34. I knew that they would not hear me. Because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, their power. For I give them a heart, meaning a mind, and ears to hear. You see? The Lord, he, he, he was going to, um, he was going to allow us to wake up, alright, in these last days. So we can have what? A hedge, a protection. So we can be, you know, saved. So no evils will come upon us. Let's keep reading. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land, which I promised with an oath. Unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them. And they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. To be their power. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. You see? The Lord has purposely allowed us to remember who we are. So he can fulfill... Alright, the promises, the covenants, the oaths made to our forefathers. Alright? And then we can be saved and get put back into our land. Which is what? The land of, uh, of Israel. You see? See, the Lord set all these things up on purpose. 
All right? You know? And let's get uh, the book of Judith. Because by us remembering ourselves, right? That means that we're go going to... Uh, we're going to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. And by us doing that, we're, we're doing what? Pleasing the Heavenly Father. And if we please the Heavenly Father, what's going to happen? He's going to fight for us. Okay? See how everything ties in? This is uh, Judith chapter 5. And uh, we'll start at 7. Oh, let me see if there's anything left. Let's get straight to the point. 17. Judah 5 and 17. And whilst they sin not before their power, they prospered, meaning the Israelites, because Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, that hated iniquity, was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were very they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their power and are come up from their uh, from the places where they were scattered that possess Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country for it was desolate. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord defend them and their power before them. And we become a reproach before all the world. And that's what's happening. Since we're returning unto Yahweh Shemiah Shai, the Lord is fighting for us. Okay? And we see it. If you have spiritual eyes and, you know, spiritual ears, you can see and hear these things. All right? We see... The Lord, you know, uh, 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 um, working on the minds of these elites to, to, to get them to go to war with each other. We're seeing our people wake up. Where we're seeing the downfall and the collapse of this society right before our eyes. You know, the Lord, it, it, he, he, he's, he's making moves, man. He's making a lot of moves. We're, we're seeing that. Um, the, the transhumanism increase, all right, the cashless society being pushed forth. We're seeing these things. That means the Lord is fighting for us. Because look, before Yahweh sends his son Yahweh Shai, particular events must take place. And they're happening right now. You know? They're happening. Whether you see it or not. They they are happening. And this is why Esau is in such an uproar right now. This is why he's um, he's pushing for these particular things, such as uh, 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 um, the cashless society, such as making the uh, 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 the Israelites look bad. You know, basically doing a, a smear campaign right now. All right. You know, the persecution's coming. Everything he he he's a, the Lord Yahweh Shemuel Shai is forcing Esau to make moves. And the reason why Esau is panicking is because what he knows he has a short time, as it says in um, what is that Revelation twelve and twelve, right? But see, once Esau really comes down with that great wrath, that means our salvation is coming to speak. Hey, once e hey, Esau makes his moves, that's when the Lord is going to make all right, his moves. You see? That's when that counter-strike, you know, uh, 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 occurs. And our counter, you know, uh, strike is, is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, in particular Yahweh Shai, okay? Because he's the one that's coming to stop Esau. All right? And that's where salvation comes into place. And, that, and this is what's going to occur very soon. Let's get, um... And, and I'll say this, this is going to shock a lot of people. Let's get Wisdom of Psalm in the 5th chapter. Okay? Let's get that. And, and a lot of people are, are, are going to be in awe that we're the ones getting saved. Alright? This is Wisdom of Psalm in 5. We'll start at 1. Main points in 2 and 3. 
actually two, two, two through five is the main point, but we'll start at one. This is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. And that's what we do, okay? We go out there and, and call Esau and the heathens out on their BS, okay? We stand in great boldness, all right? The, the, the men who, who are standing so stiffly for the names of Yahweh Bashem al Shai, as it says in 2nd Ezra. The, the ones who are pre presenting their bodies as uh, as that living sacrifice. All right? You know? You see? And, and it says here, it has afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And that's the, the state of these people. When they see us, they are in fear. Especially as we get closer and closer to the end. Because the things that we're saying, it, they're coming to pass. No one can fight it. No one can deny it. Unless you're a, a complete fool. A buffoon. You know? But it, it, anybody that has a couple of uh, a couple brain cells, alright? They can see that what we're saying is happening. You know? But see, the majority of the people, they want to be what? Willingly ignorant. Because ignorance is bliss. It's easy. You know? People don't have to deal with reality when they're ignorant. You see? Alright? But, hey, eventually everything's going to hit them. Hey, they're they're going to get hit, you know... They're, they're going to basically get hit by, by like, a, uh, like a semi, so to speak. They're going to get hit by that train, so to speak. You know? All right? But it says, uh, when they see it, they should be troubled with terrible fear. And that also fulfills the prophecy in Revelation, the 11th chapter, how we're going to uh, stand on our feet because the, the Spirit entered into us. And it says, what? And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. You see, they're going to be amazed at our salvation. Because, one, we're not supposed to be the the, uh, the people of the Lord, right? It's supposed to be those um, those people that are in the uh, the state of Israel right now. All right, and we all know who they are. It is the you know the apostles and brothers say the the, the 1948ers, the small hatters. Okay, they're the ones who are um, who are supposed to be the people. So when they see the so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, all right, basically the Israelites getting beamed up, they're going to be in awe. And then I'll even say this too, little side note, a lot of a lot of the people that are of the circumcision who know that they're Israelites, when, you know, I'll say this, the, the so-called black-only Israelites or, you know, Israelites that can't accept, you know, our people looking like the heathen, when they see particular Israelites that look like so-called white people, you know, Arabs, East Indians, you know, so on and so forth getting beamed up, they're going to lose their marbles, man. They're going to be like, what? How did they make it and not me? And that's because, first off, they were a part of the elect, and two, they were humble, they believed, they had faith, they put in that work, okay? And you judge them for, 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 for looking a particular way. You, you couldn't believe that your people can maybe look like another nation, you know? So they got, they got into the kingdom before you, you see? That's what's going to happen to a lot of these, uh, you know, Israelites that are uh, of the circumcision. They're going to see a lot of, like I said, I'll even say the people like myself, because a lot of you have a lot of scoffers, especially back in the day. Now it's calmed down, but back in the day, a lot of people used to scoff me, man. You know, saying that I'm not an Israelite. They don't want to accept it because of the way I look. You know, people like myself and particular brothers in my camp, such as, you know, the brother Rapaya or the brother Dabaria, because they look like uh, so-called, you know, Ishmaelites. Or they look like Ishmaelites, you know, so-called Arabs. Brothers like us are going to get beamed up before, you know, the John Shaft looking brothers, you know. All right. Hey, but... You know, somebody's got to play that lot, or play that role. Somebody's got to fulfill that lot, that portion. I'm just glad I got this truth, and I'm ho hoping I can hold it, you know, hold on to it to the very end. But let's keep reading. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 5 
in uh, 2, let's read it again. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangers of his salvation. All right, us getting beamed up by the chariots of, of the Lord, what they call UFOs, which people think is just, you know, fantasy, a joke, but it's not. So far beyond all that they look for, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this, is, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools account his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the Most High and his lot is among the saints? You see, it's all it's going to hit them at the very end. They're going to realize, damn, these are the people. And, but they're going to still be wondering why, though. Because this is what the Lord set up, okay? This is his movie. This is his show, all right? And these are, are going to be his people, the elect. Starting with them. Because the scriptures say in the, the Zechari uh, Zechariah 13 and 9, it talks about the um, the one-third. And it says that the uh, they're going to call on the name of the Lord. All right? And the Lord is going to say, look, these are my people. And we're going to say, Yahweh Bashim al Shai is our power. So right now, even amongst uh, Israel, only the one-third is really the Lord's people. Okay? As of now. But as we know, as the scriptures say in the book of Romans, all Israel shall be saved. And they're going to be more, hey, once, you know, they perish and they come back, you know, through reincarnation, you know, they'll be in the right mind. And they'll, they'll be good too. All our people are going to be good in the kingdom, which is a beautiful thing. We'll be living in, in harmony. You know, we, we, we'll be at peace with each other. We'll be loving one another. You see, it's going to be a great time in the kingdom, man. You know, and this is why we're fighting so hard for it. We, 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 we want to get out of this hellhole. Because this place, as it says in Micah 2 and 10, this is not our rest. This place is the, the valley of the shadow of death. There, they, it's, it's death all over. You know? This, this world is full of infirmities and unrighteousness, as the scriptures say. You know? We want to get out of this kingdom. This wicked, evil kingdom that we're in. We want the kingdom to come. Which is uh, Yahweh Hashem Al Shai's kingdom. Which... It, it, you know, because look, Yahweh is going to give the kingdom to Yahweh Shai. And since we are the Israelites, as it's, what does it say in the book of Romans, the uh, 8th chapter, and I think the 17th or 16th verse, I think it's 17th, that we're going to be joint heirs. So if Yahweh Shai is getting the kingdom, that means we're getting the kingdom as is, you know, as the nation of Israel. And that means we're going to be ruling in righteousness. So the point being, though, is we're fighting to get, you know, Get, get their salvation That's why we're pushing so hard That's why you see brothers live all the time That's why you see brothers making videos left and right Camping several days Going to class You know, throughout the week Alright Tr Trying their best to, 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 you know Follow the law, statutes, and commandments You know Putting away a, a, Those wicked thoughts and their, their wicked ways Being that new man you know, that's all labor and battle uh, and battles right there. You see? And, and these things are going to lead to salvation, okay? Now, let's end it off with this. You know, I just wanted to touch on a couple subjects. Don't want to make this too long either. I think I pretty much hit the points. All right, but let's get uh, Hebrews uh, 4 and 11. Let's get this. Let us therefore... Oh, it says... Excuse me. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief, which goes into disobedience. Okay, so we, we got to labor. You know, got to labor before we can enter into the into that rest. All right, that's going to lead to salvation. We, you know, we can't be, you know, lazy in this. We we got to you know, you know, be like the you know, be that farmer, so to speak. All right, got to you know. Till the land, plant the seeds, you know, water the crops, you know, to, you know, trim, uh, trim the, uh, the leaves, you know, all right? Then eventually, hey, we, you know, we got to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get the fruit, okay? That's all labor right there. And we, like I said, we got to be like that, you know, like those, uh, those farmers, but spiritually speaking, all right? Hey, Shalom, Mark. Hey, no, it's all good, man. Hey, I understand. If you're driving, you know, 
it is what it is, and you can't be throwing up precepts, man. <laughs> but, you know, hey, you know, like I said, I'm going to, you know, just end this lesson. You know, hey, shalom to all your brothers and sisters who are listening. And hopefully this was another edifying video. Hey, just keep pushing, you know, keep fighting. Our salvation is nearer than what we believe, as the scriptures say. Remember, Yahweh Bashim al Shai is fighting for us. And how is he doing that? By uh, fulfilling, you know, his, his promises and and fulfilling the prophecies, making them truly come to pass. And I mentioned a few earlier. You're seeing the downfall of Babylon, the collapse of the, the society, the push for the 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 uh, a push for transhumanism, push for a cashless society, okay, so on and so forth. Those those are just to name a few. All right, but I'm gonna end this lesson. Hopefully it was edifying. With that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. Also, um, double honors to the apostles and elders. Great millstone and salutations to all you brothers out there. Shalom.